Whether you're shooting a product review at your desk, showing the audience what's going on in your pot while cooking, filming a music video, documenting a painting through a time lapse, or telling a story about minimalism from your bed, overhead top-down shots give viewers a unique perspective, but can be a hassle to set up sometimes. In this video, I'm gonna show you 12 ways how to easily film overhead top-down shots for all kinds of budgets, so you too can add this camera angle from above to your productions. If you're new here, my name's Javier Mercedes. I do video tech tutorials and gear reviews on this channel. If you're into that, hit that subscribe button. Let's dive into number one, this type of bed overhead shot that was made popular by one of my favorite creators, Matt Diavella. Take your phone and some tape, preferably painter's tape since it won't rip off the paint when you're done. Put a couple of pieces across each other on the back. Make sure you hit the record button and tape it to the ceiling above you. With this angle, you are locked into a specific height and position, but this is a very simple and quick setup to achieve. Number two, probably the quickest and most versatile way to achieve a top-down shot is handheld. The major drawback here being that if you need to use your hands in the shot, you're gonna need a second person to film. I highly recommend investing in a stair-step ladder like this or an apple box so the person can elevate themselves above you in the action. The second tip that goes for all setups here is to utilize your camera's ability to connect to your smartphone to monitor your framing if possible. Most camera companies have apps for your phone and computer. I use this imaging app for Sony cameras daily. If you're using something like an iPhone, don't forget that you can monitor on your computer if you have a long enough lightning cable through QuickTime. There's also the option of getting an HDMI dongle, but being able to see whatever you're doing on a monitor in front of you makes your workflow while you're doing your top-down shot so much easier. Getting back to handheld, the third tip is if you are doing a tutorial at this angle, turn the onboard microphone towards yourself so you get better audio. Now this way I can see what's on the monitor and I can do the things with my hands. There are two more issues that I want to bring up when it comes to shooting your top-down shot shots handheld. The first being, how long would you be able to hold that camera above my head? Uh, if I worked out more, then longer <laughs> than 15 seconds. <laughs> okay. So if you're using a secondary shooter handheld, their arms are going to get fatigued and they're probably going to cost money unless they're your wife. So I guess the money just stays in the family. Number three, after you've washed your phone, a good technique for social media is the in-mouth technique. This does make it hard for you to see what you're doing because the phone blocks your view, so it takes some getting used to viewing your actions through the camera phone. This is probably exclusive to filming vertical videos, but this is simple and quick to execute, thus making it perfect for those quick turnaround social media platforms. If horizontal video is what you're after, then tip number four is to still use your mouth, except now use a GoPro. Be sure to adjust the angle of the GoPro correctly. You have to keep your head at the same angle or else you'll end up with a bunch of footage of your chest. My friend Stefan Casado from not another cooking show uses this technique and he calls it mouth cam. Because it was impractical for me to have an overhead rig. Mm -hmm. And everyone asks, why don't you put it on your head? Why don't you put it on your chest? First off the mouth, I have complete control. I can't move my body the same way I can direct my head. And it's easy. Pop it in, as soon as I have the shot, throw it on the table. You can buy mouthpiece holders specifically for GoPros. Again, I'll have links to everything I'm talking about in the description below. Number five, I like to call hang it over the ledge and shove a counterweight on the back of it technique. In this example, I'm using a small tripod and a lightweight camera with some books on the back of the tripod as a counterweight. But the same concept can be used for heavier cameras and large tripods. Hit that thumbs up button if these tips have been helpful so far. Sometimes you don't even need a tripod and a camera to hang over the ledge. In fact, here I'm using that same stair ladder that we have with a cell phone camera hanging just over the edge. Scale in a bit and post and there you go. Number six is hands down my favorite piece of gear to get top down shots, the Dinkum Systems Action Pod Pro. With a camera mount sized thread on one end and a sturdy clamp on the other, this makes it the quickest, most versatile piece of gear to mount your camera almost anywhere. Also, if you want to accomplish this and you're only using a cell phone, you could use a cell phone mount or there are gooseneck clamps on Amazon to do this exact same function as well. My sister-in-law at Emily Mercedes Art on Instagram would hang her cell phone from a lighting fixture above the kitchen table with one of these to get her painting time lapses. If you notice in this shot though, I'm using a tripod pointed down to film her time lapse, which leads us to number seven, using a tripod. This is a great option for heavier cameras. My Manfrotto tripod has an option to extend the tripod head out at a 90 degree angle pointing the camera downwards, but I do have a 50 millimeter lens on the camera. This is more in the telephoto range, so it has to be further from your subject, but you don't have to worry about your tripod legs getting in the shot because the image is so punched in. Another drawback of this technique may be that you bump into your tripod legs while you shoot. 
but I find myself using this technique often to do top-down shots with my bigger cameras. Method number eight is to use a microphone stand. Unfortunately, the threads on a microphone stand are not the same as what goes into a camera, but if you already have a microphone clip, what I like to do is use the dummy microphone handle that came with my zoom recorders, and that handle does come with the threads that go into cameras. So instead of placing my zoom recorder on the microphone stand, I just use my camera. But if you plan on using your microphone stand a lot, better, more permanent options for this would be a stage microphone stand to camera thread adapter, preferably one that allows you to swivel the angle of the camera at the end, or buy an adapter that allows you to put a small tripod head on the end of the microphone stand. And sticking with this concept of using microphone stands, technique number nine is to use a scissor boom arm that is normally used for a microphone. These are commonly held in place on a table by a clamp that has a hole for the boom arm to slide into. Utilize all the same adapters that I just mentioned, and this makes for an easy to move around solution for tabletop overhead shots. Again, if all you're using is a cell phone, there are some cheaper options on Amazon to do this exact setup. Method number 10, I think is the preferred option if you're using a heavy camera, and that is to use a C-stand. The Flashpoint C-stand that I have comes with specific threads on the end of the boom arm that fit tripod heads and cameras thus making it a one-stop shop to get top-down shots from those higher positions. Another plus is you can also rotate the arm to get a shot like this. Just be sure to use proper counterweights, and if you look closely, you could use that Dickum Systems Action Prod Pro to hold your monitor while shooting. Being able to mount your camera to a C-stand properly is crucial too, so I'll link some of the options on how to do that in the description below. Method 11 is mostly for high budget production work, but if you have the money, renting a jib can yield amazing results. For a music video that I shot, we hoisted a Sony FS7 over a swimming pool to get some pretty cool angles. Method 12 is pretty self-explanatory, using a drone. It's great for outdoor shots and establishing scenery. Tough to use indoors, but I've seen it done. Now that we've gone over the type of gear that you can use to shoot overhead shots, let me briefly give some examples of how to light an overhead shot. Here we have no light, except some spilling over from the closed window blinds. Opening up the window gives a nice, soft, diffused light over the subject, which is why I highly suggest doing your shot by a window if you don't have access to any lights. If we were to turn on a secondary hard LED light from the opposite side, things get a little weird because I have light coming from two sides and I think people are used to seeing primary light come from one direction. If I close the window and only use the LED at a side angle, you can cast some cool long shadows on your subject. Here I've turned on my soft box light above the gear and this creates some nice soft light with hardly any shadows on the material. The main drawback of lighting from above like this is that the glare gets on glossy textures. Since the camera is filming at the same exact angle that the light is coming from, it makes it tough to show off reflective surfaces unless you hold that item at an angle. Another option is to take the lights you do have and bounce them off your surroundings to get ambient light as opposed to pointing them directly at your source to create an even light across your subject. But personally, when it boils down to it, I like to use daylight through a window as much as possible because I think that looks the most aesthetically pleasing, especially if it's a cloudy day. I am curious though, what are you using to achieve your top-down shot? Leave me a comment down below. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button if you want more content like this. Share this video with another creator that might find this information helpful, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance.